Ja, 1988. Ik was 31 jaar oud en bekam windpokken. Een kinderkrankheid. Maar ik had die vroeger niemals gehad. In 1988, I was 31 years old and got the chickenpox, a childhood disease. But I had never had them before. And after a week, I thought everything was okay again, but then it really got started. Complications with partial paralysis. It started like this. I felt such a heat all through my body, a really bad headache, a fever. And from one minute to the next, I had no strength at all anymore. Eine Muskelschwäche, dass ich nicht mehr auf meine Beine stehen konnte. A weakness of the muscles, so that I could not stand on my own legs anymore. A heat all through my body, as if somebody had poured hot tea over my arms and legs. I could not bear any fabrics anymore on the inner side of my arms and legs. And I could only lie on my back, propped up, only flat, without any pillows. Gestützt, nur noch platt, ohne Kissen. Whenever I didn't do that, I got a severe pain in my arms, my hips and my legs. My neck needed to be stabilized with pillows. I had a bad pain in my neck. I was also allergic to almost all foodstuffs. And when I had eaten sugar, for example, I loved sweets, but I felt such a dizziness and fatigue, a weakness in my muscles and eczemas under my arms and itching. I felt terrible. I could hardly speak anymore, sometimes not at all. I never knew in advance when I would not be able to swallow. Then it all came out of my nose. Aber zu gar nicht mehr schlucken. Nur ich wusste niemals vorher, wann ich nicht mehr schlucken konnte. Ich kam es aus meiner Nase. Ich konnte nicht mehr schlafen. I could not sleep anymore. Had a heart rhythm disturbance. Had trouble concentrating. I could not find the right words anymore and the correct order. Fever, the shakes, diarrhea. And the shakes were so heavy, there was like spastic seizures, so that my whole body was shaking. And I was so afraid of that. I never knew how will I get back out of that. I had to be taken care of day and night. I could not wash myself anymore. I could not feed myself anymore. Others then had to do that. I could not wash myself anymore. I could not feed myself anymore. Others then had to do that. And what was for me very slim was that I... What was very bad for me, I was mentally very clear in my head. I could hear everything very well, but I could not express myself. And that was so incredibly terrible for me. When people sit next to your bed, they talk about you. They think you're mentally not clear in the head anymore. And I was clear in the head, but I could not give them a response. That was really pure hell for me. And during that time, I often thought, yeah, I don't want to live like that anymore, or I can't take it anymore, even though I really wanted to live deep down inside. And then I heard about Bruno Gröning's teaching from a friend of mine. She had the same disease, also encephalomyelitis. She sat in a wheelchair, and this friend said, Here I have something about 1994, and there you can get the healing. I could not believe that something like that could exist. But then I still, after nine months of brooding, after all, I could only lie around and brood, then I thought, what will I do now? And the doctor, a neurologist, said, I cannot help you. You have to find a different path. And then on June 4, 1995, I said to myself, okay, now I will do that. I will do what the people told me to do. This whole disease I will put into a trash can. I don't want it anymore. I must admit, I was afraid of all that. I needed courage. And then I also said, Bruno Gröning, I don't understand anything, but I also need courage so that I can get rid of this, that I dare to let go of the disease. And that's what I did. And right at that moment, I also had a photograph of Bruno Gröning in my hands, right at that moment when I did that, some kind of strength went all through me. 
It went all through my body, exactly as if everything was turned inside out, and I felt such love and such happiness, which I had not felt for a long time. I also cried. Some fear also wanted to come then, but I felt, no, you don't need to be afraid. You received the healing. I knew that. After three months, I went to a community hour for the very first time. I could sit in the wheelchair for a whole hour, and after the community hour, I could walk down the stairs for the very first time, after seven and a half years. At the next community hour, three weeks later, I could sit on a normal chair already. That I also had been unable to do for those seven and a half years. I could hardly sit in the wheelchair. And then a few weeks later, there was a conference of the Circle of Friends. And regarding that, I first had been afraid to come along, because I also needed a special electrical bed in which I normally lay. For seven years, I could not sleep normally at all. But after I had taken in that strength, I could sleep again for the first time. And then I went along to that conference, and at that conference, I then received the full healing. After that, I could once again do everything. I played table tennis, I could roller skate. I played badminton, I went hiking in the mountains. After that, I started to paint with an airbrush. And I also met a lovely man, and I'm now married. I could take professional training. I went to a technical college. In the past, I had used to do something in the media business, and now I had the feeling, not that anymore. Now I've become a photographer. A photographer for pictures of babies and children, and of course I also take photos at weddings and of landscapes, and I love it, and I help out in the circle of friends, together with my husband. I became a very happy person, and I have, once I could eat everything again, gained a lot of weight. I can eat sugar again and everything. I don't have to mind that anymore, and can simply do whatever I want, just like a normal person. And I am very happy. Und ich bin sehr glücklich.